Rose, my love. Jay, my Romeo. Once upon a time, Jay Cavendish traveled from the cold shoulder of Scotland to the baking heart of America to find his love. Hi, welcome to What the Flick, everybody. Matt, Christy, Alonzo, and Ben. Uh, we're here to talk about a new movie with Michael Fassbender called Slow West. Uh, this is the uh, first film from uh, uh, John McClane, which is great because, I mean, you know, eventually right. his movies, his, his life is like a movie. I mean, he's right. caught in, <laughs> in the buildings. No, the no, no, no. He saved that, Nakatomi no, Plaza. Uh, John McClane. Uh, <laughs> then this is, uh, this is some foreigner who made a movie about the West. This, uh, <laughs> this uh, is the story of, uh, of a 16-year-old Scottish kid with pretty much no accent who uh, uh, works his way across uh, 19th century America looking for the girl, the woman really, the young woman, slightly older woman, who he loved in Scotland, who he feels sort of responsible for forcing her and her father to flee the country. And he presumes that when he wakes his way across the rugged, violent, barren, dangerous West, that he will find her and like a romantic comedy and it will be true love. And he meets along the way uh, Michael Fassbender, who is a rugged old school cowboy who realizes the dangers the kid faces and he uh, helps him maybe uh, get out west, but Fassbender may have other motives. A jackrabbit in a den of wolves. Care not why I'm headed west? No. It was an accident. It was all my fault. My girl and her father fled from Scotland. Nobody knows where we are. Nobody knows who we are. The bounty hunters. What do they want? Blood, money, and two thousand dollars. Tice is a certain breed of undesirable. Just what breeds are you? May I enter? It's free country. Are you headed west? North. West. Big storm coming. It's big trouble. I've been waiting, wishing Teaming up with them? I think that's a smart play. There's more to life than surviving. Yeah, there's dying. Kill that house! Yes, sir. No, sir. Three bags full of shit. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> no love like a love like this, because a love don't exist when a boy want to play so. The film was shot in New Zealand. I have yeah. a feeling that he's, that he's, maybe that's why I think that he's, he's a Kiwi. That he's a Kiwi. Uh, which, you know, if you're going to try and capture what big sky country, uh, you know, must have looked like in the late uh, 1800s, you know, apparently New Zealand is the place to go because it's gorgeous. And uh, the movie, I think, really kind of captures that, um, you know, this is actually a vibe you get out of a, a lot of Australian movies like like Walkabout, you know, or, right. or Picnic at Hanging Rock, the idea of nature being sort of simultaneously gorgeous and ready to devour you at any moment, you know. Uh, so I love how it's kind of terrifying and yet still stunning, the, 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 all the so stuff that he's beautiful. in. beautiful. I don't know yeah. that I totally agree with you on the, on the nature ready to devour you. I think that the people in this are much more dangerous than anything nature has to offer. Well, fact, they're no peach either, but I, I kind of, you know, between the, the deserts and then the, the you know, the, the mountains and the forests and everything. Anything could happen. Although, what are, what are, you know, talking about how the way this looks, I, I like that unlike some of the movies we see out of Australia where there's this bleak, kind of washed out look to them, the colors here are very vibrant. Totally These are nice. very high, you know, the shot, very high contrast and almost overexposed and, and you know, the greens are almost fluorescent in this. It's a really kind of different look I think we've seen in a Western in a while. Um, it's not dusty. It's not dusty, right. Uh, it's, I thought, I really like this movie. Yeah. I like the narration by Fassbender. Mm -hmm. You know, he comes in and he immediately sets up, he's like, you know, he said, I, I ran into this kid, I don't know how he survived, he was like a jackrabbit among wolves. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought that was such a great line and a lot of his, you know, he's so laconic in this movie and he'll, you know, why use 10 words when two will do? You know, when they get on the road, he's like, let's drift. <laughs> and it, it, I think that it sets an interesting tone for this movie. Yeah, the choice of words, the choice of dialogue, and just like the, the cadence to it quite often is, is off kilter and like unexpectedly, absurdly funny. Mm. Yeah, there's like some... there's danger everywhere, but then a little bit of humor will just pop up out of nowhere and break the tension. And this is. Yeah, there are a couple of this really one, clever. including in sort of the, the big finale, there's a very, very funny moment in the middle of. Yes. Of the <laughs> 
that is where you, you laugh hard, and it, yet it's the middle of this potentially tragic yeah, circumstance. But, but then at the same time, the film ends, and this isn't a spoiler, I guess I won't say who's involved in it, but there, the, the, the film it gives you like this quick montage of every single person that died yes. over the course of the film, and so it's sort of like, oh yeah, right, like right. this was, this is, this is was a, there, was, there, was, there was awful <laughs> stuff happening There's a here. lot of stuff, there's a, not even an attempt to be subtle about it, uh, commentary about uh, the extent to which we displaced Native Americans, sure. so I mean like this is a, this stands as a nice contrast to all those successful westerns that we made in the 30s, 40s, and before like in the beginning of the 50s where we are like, Wait a minute. Maybe maybe they're not the bad guys. Like, maybe we've done a right. grave, grave disservice here. Th this makes it very clear that we were the bad guys. Sure. Uh, Matt Matt Ferrer rightly mentions how like devastatingly gorgeous this is and how vibrant, how colorful it is. But the one scene that is kind of stark and bleak is when they come across the Native American settlement that has been right. just decimated. Right. And that's just like strong blacks and grays and it's smoky and it's beautiful mm -hmm. in its own way. But it's yeah, and they're covered and else. they're covered almost like face paint when yeah. they come out in the, the yeah. soot. Just yeah. sort of soot and, in the, yeah. and also the movie kind of plays upon who was forging that trail west at that time. Everybody in this movie pretty much is a foreigner. You know, mm -hmm. you've got Fassbender, you've got Cody Smith McPhee as the Scottish guy, you've got Ben Mendelsohn, you know, mm -hmm. like everybody in this movie has a, there's, a, and there's a, a there, foreign accent, you know. There's a Swedish family that they right, come right. upon and, and and, and in addition to the funny line at the end, there's a, a moment of revealing during the, scene, during the first scene involving the Swedes that is, I thought, incredibly shocking. Just right. a sort of a great, great, great moment mm -hmm. in the movie. And, and, the, and the world feels very lived in, you know, just from like, there's a scene where Cody Smith McPhee gets drunk and wanders into the wrong camp, and it just feels like <laughs> a thing that could happen. And you know? he, right, he's like, and, oh, a terrible mistake. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know? exactly. and, and like this general store that's literally in the middle of nowhere where you can buy a suit and get served dinner, and you know, just because it's that's all there that's is. There's a great line know? in that, I don't, that where the, <laughs> where the guy's the store, robbing him. store's being robbed, and, and he goes, you know, he wants the money, and he's like, you know, the, this is the only place where you can spend it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. uh, also, Ben Mendelsohn, we should mention, is always such a great, scary bad yeah, yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Even, like, even the little bits, he just creates such an impression, and such a full character, and uh, yeah, he's great in this too. Now, where's he the drug dealer? Uh, where, but the Animal sort, Kingdom? Right? The Animal Kingdom. No, but not, yeah. not, not Animal Kingdom. No, where he, like, he and a buddy, or there are two drug dealers. Or, uh, killing, killing Me Softly? Killing Me Softly. Yeah, they're killing not me drug softly. dealers. But yeah, yeah right, softly, but I mean, yeah, they, right. don't they, oh, they rob. They rob the mobsters. They rob the mobsters. They rob the mobsters. I like that a lot. Yeah, no, he's great. This movie is available on demand, so if you live in the U.S., you can easily access it, you know, via the usual channels. But if it is showing uh, theatrically where you are, uh, I recommend seeing it on the big screen because the cinematography is so great. Yeah. Unless you've got a really kick-ass home theater. And I feel like, you know, this is a first-time filmmaker, but there's, I can see influence from, like, the Coen brothers in here, right? Totally. And a little yeah. bit of Sam Raimi. A little Terrence Malick. Yeah, and, and it feels, the story feels a little bit at times like, Something that, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see a story like this come out of somebody like Cormac McCarthy. Like, it's got some element, not completely, but it's... It's a little know, absurdist, but also yeah. a little violent and horrifying. Right. And the vibe of the dialogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Very, the, very specific vibe of and, the and, you know, and like, uh, and, and the hero in Fastbender is not, you know, he's even, at, at all points, he's this massively complicated guy. Mm -hmm. You know, he'd had some history with a gang, then he left, but we don't know why he left mm -hmm. the gang. It's certainly not because he thought they're too evil for me. Yeah, no. Right. <laughs> I mean, it was, you know. So he, it's a really sort of, you know, it's a complicated, well-drawn character. There's no real hero in this. There's no old school hero. And for a movie that kind of takes its time and lives up to its title, it's only 84 minutes. Yeah. Uh, so so it's a perfect combo yeah, it's of kind of not zipping through things, but also not being a real driver. It's never too languid. Yeah. It's locked it's length. Right. No, I, and in fact, I thought afterwards, that that could have had yeah. 16 more minutes. We sure. could have had a little more exposition for what was happening. Okay. And stuff. So and what's your number? Uh, I think I did a eight and a half. I liked it. Uh, yeah, 8.2. 8.7. 8.9. So our average is an 8.6. It's at 89% on the tomato meter. So find it in some form near you soon.